Chuck, for you, you have watched this team for a long time. Where do we? Where would you rank that performance by Jalen Brunson game four all time? Oh, it was um, – and, and peace out to you, man. Big fan for so many years. I begs. I hit you up always on, on social media, follow you. But, um, yeah, um, it, it coincidentally, it breaks Bernard King's record with a Bernard King-like performance. As, as far as the, uh, the game, I rank it like top top five <laughs> as a Nick fan. And, and um, I was happy to be a Nick fan ever since 1967, you know, by my dad. So I've seen a lot of Nick contests, but that performance top five. And I know maybe there's more to come, but, um, yo, I mean, it was almost like when Embiid threw that skeptical elbow mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and um, Jalen Brunson's like, what you do that for? Mm -hmm. It reminded me of a of an incident way back in the 70s when I think Phil Shania pushed Walt Frazier. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was a playoff game, but the rivalry was intense and Clyde just went off. That mm -hmm. reminded me yesterday of Bernard King, Walt Frazier, when he got pushed, it just took him to another level. It's one of those, like, all I need is all I needed was that to happen. It's going to be interesting to see how Philadelphia reacts Tuesday, game five at the Garden. Do they fold up the tent? Does Embiid come out and, and try to dominate and get the Sixers back to the Wells Fargo Center? Uh, I guess you could still call it the Wells Fargo Center after Sunday. Does he try to get him back there for game six? It's going to be, uh, you know, a big moment for this Sixers team and really Embiid, I think, his era here in Philadelphia. But let's get back to the Knicks here because you talk about Embiid and you talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, the one point in the fourth quarter. I know a lot of people are saying that he was tired. Nick Nurse probably shouldn't have played him that many consecutive minutes. And I understand that. I totally get it. But at the same time, if you're a star, don't you have to carry your team in that moment when the Knicks are down one center, the other center is on the bench with foul trouble, you're facing uh, their third string string big man, no disrespect at all to Precious Achua, who has a very, very fine player, and OG Ananobi, who you have several inches on and, and many pounds on, you should, I think, score in those moments and deliver and credit to the Nick defense for what they were able to do. And Chuck, you look at the two, the two guys I mentioned, OG, Precious, Achua, obviously coming over from the Toronto, Toronto trade. Uh, I mean, looking back on that deal and, and, and looking at last night or yesterday afternoon, I should say, just your thoughts on the deal and its impact on the franchise. Oh, tremendous. Uh, the fact that, you know, you heard uh, OG says, listen, me and Precious already played together and we, we were also accustomed to like trapping off something. And it was almost like they threw a cage around Joel Embiid. And, you know, OG went one-on-one -on -one in many cases, but then Precious cheated and came in. It was sort of like this cage. And Precious has this, this kinetic energy with him as well, as long with the wingspan. I think it gave him uh, uh, an issue. Your now, opinion of Joel Embiid after watching him night in and night out in this series, has it changed? And if it has, how has it changed? My opinion hasn't changed on him. He's he's a he's a monster. He's a wall. Um, I think the Philadelphia management has failed the city. I think it's failed Joel Embiid. I think he's a dude where they're, they're saying, okay, yeah, he's a dirty player, but he's a wall, man. He's seven two two eighty, man. I don't like the way he flopped all the way. He's always flopping on the court like some giant amoeba because he's bound to cause in, injury. He's a former soccer player. He has ballet type tendencies. Mm. He could kind of like throw his body at half the team and 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 just have a specific hit. And him being able to get up unhurt, but everybody wondering like what hit me? A tidal wave, a tsunami? Yes. Um, but I don't think he's intentionally dirty. I think he's just using his his tactics. And I think the Knicks best tactic is doing like, you know, we will wear you out. 48 minutes, 94 feet. Philadelphia couldn't breathe the last five minutes. They were sucking for air. When the Knicks had that five offensive rebound possession, Philly was cooked. They was done, man. 
Matter of fact, it took the air out of out of Wells Fargo as well. The Knicks will wear your brains out. They will scratch your face off, man. And um, that to me, like that, just left me to the point where I was like, I haven't seen many teams like this. I think Miami Heat culture um, is is the precedent, and Tom Thibodeau is is similar. And if you don't face the Knicks' condition, you will lose that final four minutes. That's why with the with the Knicks. With our lineup, we're not a runaway team. However, the Knicks are a team, if they stay close, those last six minutes of the fourth quarter, that's why the, the Knicks have always been an uphill trying to come back if they're down type team. If we fall 30 behind, we'll probably end up losing by nine. Mm. If we're close, the Knicks, the last six minutes are carnivorous, bro. Carnivorous.